Here we go. Ciao a tutti. Ciao a tutti. Ciao. Ok, parleremo di champagne. Parleremo in inglese. Um, now I'm sending the request to Christophe Prie. We are going to have a, a great tasting. Uh, we're going to taste another two of uh, the QV of Christophe Prie, the owner of uh, Champagne Gardé. And now I'm inviting him to join with us. All right. Hello. Ciao, Christophe. Hello, Carota. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Good to see you. Yeah, me too, me too. <laughs> How is everything? Very well, very well. It's okay. a day off today in France and we have a beautiful sunshine. Yeah. Uh, so we are really enjoying our day. It's a perfect afternoon to drink champagne. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, I was just wondering what could be better than a glass of champagne in the afternoon? <laughs> That's great. Okay, thank you so much for uh, this uh, another appointment because uh, uh, the last time, uh, this is just a little reminder for everyone. We um, talked about uh, uh, Champagne with Christophe Prier. Um, uh, he's the owner of Champagne Gardé. It is an historical maison uh, located in chigny la rose Uh, which is in the uh, Montagne de Rams uh, sub-region of the Champagne area, uh, which is a, you know, a sub-region quite uh, important for, especially for growing uh, Pinot Noir and Meunier. Um, and then uh, uh, the last time uh, we tasted uh, two of the cuvée of uh, Christophe, and especially we focused in the style of the Maison, and this is what we, uh, you know, tasted in the Brut Tradition, so we have got the sensation of the style, um, what Christophe is looking for in uh, their cuvée, uh, the clarity, the cleanness, the, the tension, and the expressivity of the uh, grape varieties. And then we also tasted the Blanc de Noir, which is, uh, um, you know, uh, you, we, we felt the style of the Maison, but we also felt the tension, the strength of the Pinot Noir, uh, which is the grape variety that in the, uh, especially in the blend, uh, brings a, a lot of tension and strength and lingering and makes the wine fuller in body, especially. Um, what we are uh, tasting right now is uh, another two cuvées, which I'm really, really excited to try because our other two cuvées of the lineup of Champagne Gardé. And especially in this uh, uh, tasting session, uh, we are going to focus uh, in uh, particular, um, particularly in the structure of the wine. And because uh, the last time we talked about the blending process and how the blending is very helpful for the Champagne's Maison to, uh, to make the unique style of the house. Uh, so blending grapes, blending vineyards, uh, and also in the winemaking process, the use of oak or not. So this can be also helpful to bring, uh, especially the uh, sensation, the creaminess, the density, the weight of the wine. So, and uh, this is uh, another approach which is very important in the, in, the, in the blending process. But, you know, it's something very, um, and Christophe, you can tell me, it's something very calculated and precise because it's always uh, referred to a particular uh, style and uh, a particular um, sensation that we expect into the wine. Exactly. It's uh, basically when you want to focus on reserve wine. At yeah. Gardet, uh, we like to age part of the reserve wine in oak barrels. Okay. So uh, when we uh, produce a cuvee with a blending where we really want to emphasize on the style of mm. reserve wine. And yeah. uh, so then we will age our reserve wine uh, one year, two years in oak barrels. When I say oak barrels, I'm yeah. talking about foudre. Okay. Foudre is the French name for a large size. Large. Oak barrel. Okay, you, exactly. you mean large um, barrels. So uh, I, I, I repeat myself, it's not uh, a vinification in oak. Yeah. It's only aging the wine, the still white wine in oak. Okay. 
and we are looking for the contact with the oak. Uh, we're, going, we're, we're going to look for the exchange in between uh, uh, the oak and, uh, of course, the outside um, atmosphere of the yeah. winery. And basically, we will be talking about oxygenation. Of course. And of course, getting much more complexity into uh, the style of our white wine. It brings uh, we, are using, we are using on purpose uh, old oak barrels. Okay. We are not using new barrels. Uh, okay. We don't want, uh, uh, you know, uh, the vanilla taste you could get from a, a brand new barrel. Uh, okay. We don't not want the tannin that could be coming from a brand new barrel. Yeah. Uh, we are making white wine, so we are not okay. in Bordeaux. Sure. We are not looking for the tannin. Uh, sure. We are only looking for the complexity. Sure, and of course, uh, when, when you say that uh, you, um, you 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 tend to use uh, uh, old or already used barrels, uh, I mean, also in the wine, uh, we should expect something that is a, is a touch of hint of spice, uh, just a hint, but it's not something that will cover um, the the aromas of the grape varieties. Exactly. Because, yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, that's, that's great. And that's uh, very important also to understand the difference in the use of the oak, uh, which is something very, um, that has to be very precise and very uh, calculated uh, according also uh, to the style of the... So once we uh, look at the label and we say, uh, and we look at the label and we uh, see Brut Reserve, what does it mean? It means that we want to uh, focus on reserve wine. All right. And in this case, the reserve wine has been aged one year in oak barrels. Okay. Uh, this is a, uh, an old cuvee, a Champagne Gardé. Uh, it is an historical cuvee uh, that uh, uh, we have been selling for a very long time. Uh, we can go back to uh, the 30s, the 40s, oh. when I have uh, some... Uh, papers showing that we were uh, selling this cuvee in England. Okay. And this cuvee has been very, very popular in England because the uh, tiny oaky style, uh, of course, um, is uh, suitable to the English taste. Yeah, 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 because it tends also to be a little bit more creamy and uh, also in, the, in, in sensation, in terms of sensation, I mean. But this doesn't mean that the wine is flat. So it's, a, it's very important to focus that the density and the sensation in taste is something that brings uh, complexity. Yeah, but th this doesn't mean that and the wine... Yeah, please. And once again, uh, it's a question of blending. And uh -huh. the blending here is uh, giving the proportion for the reserve wine at only uh, 25%. Okay, so here so we are talking will be about. Mainly uh... one harvest and okay. only 25%, exactly, 25% okay. reserve wine. Okay, there is 25% of reserve wines, and all of these wines have been aged in oak, or there is a no, part the rest, okay. the, the main harvest in this case, it was uh, Harvest 11. Mm -hmm. uh, harvest okay. 11 uh, vinificated in standstill vats. Interesting, interesting. Plus 25% coming from Harvest 10, aged okay. one year in oak barrels. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so, and um, I, I, I see also Brut Reserve, Premier Cru. And Premier Cru, what exactly. does it mean? Premier Cru, because uh, in the blend, we will be uh, having grapes from only uh, Premier Cru and Grand Cru Village. And Grand Cru Village. Uh, okay. uh, it's uh, the perfect balance. It's mm -hmm. one third of each grape. One okay. third of Pinot Noir, one third yeah. of Meunier, and uh -huh. one third of Chardonnay. Ah, In the case of for Pinot Noir and Meunier, uh, villages from Montagne de Reims, Premier mm -hmm. Cru, villages from Montagne de Reims, and for the Chardonnay, Premier Cru and Grand Cru from Côte des Blancs. Okay, interesting, interesting. So. By looking at the color, in the meanwhile, I've just poured uh, in the glass, so the color looks uh, uh, straw yellow, and it has also some golden hints, uh, and this makes me feel, uh, well, something that in here we expect uh, a little bit more developing flavors, and... Uh, um, that's something that um, the Perlage looks uh, amazing. Very, very small bubbles here. 
and also tends to be uh, to comes up very very slowly now i'm smelling now well in the smell i can get a uh, complexity the smell it looks yeah very intense smell and also um i can get at the first smell um the stone fruit a hint of a peach, yellow peach, apricot, and a little bit of tropical fruit as well. Uh, I can get spice, a little bit more. Now we're coming up more in the smell. And, you know, I feel intensity and uh, complexity. So it's a, it's a smell quite deep and profound. And this makes me feel that uh, there are reserve wines here. So, and, uh, and this is very uh, interesting to feel this uh, complexity uh, in the smell. Uh, so not, not just fruit, but also hint of floral, hint of spice. And now, now we're coming up the, uh, you know, the, um, um, the baked spice or uh, pastry or a little bit pastry, of brioche. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that kind of flavors. But just now when the wine is... Uh, uh, is now opening uh, more. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Let's give a sip. I'm very curious to see what the expectation in taste. Mm. Wow, there. I feel that, well, it, it is very elegant, but is, there is this feeling of creaminess in the structure, and, but very balanced. It is uh, and perfectly, I, you know what? I think that in this one, uh, there is a, a great combination between uh, the tradition, because it's super classic blend of one third of each, Pinot Noir, Meunier, and Chardonnay. But, you know, in this creaminess, in this density, there is a touch of modernity, a little bit. So I think there is a, a great balance between uh, uh, tradition and uh, innovation here. The finish is uh, super long, and I can get spice, I can get uh, all at the end, these baked spice. The body is full, the body is uh, elegant, um, but it is, yeah, it, it is very wide. Um, what I don't feel, uh, but maybe I, I think, and I believe that I will feel in the next one, is the minerality. I feel a little less, uh, but maybe because it's more integrated with the spice and complexity, you know? Exactly. Uh, you're right, uh, Carta, because uh, two-thirds of black grape, two-thirds of Pinot, yeah. means that the minerality is only com coming at the end. Okay, you, right. Yeah, what I felt... Have the minerality uh, yeah. is on the yeah. palette. It's only yeah. at the end, the minerality of yeah. citrus. Yeah. Is this but, a wine uh, that you uh, suggest also to, to keep for further aging? Because I believe, well, it's great to drink now, but I think that can develop uh, even more. You know, this wine has uh, been already almost 10 years in our cellar. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. Leaving the bottle with contact with the lees. So wow. the maturity of this champagne uh, is already there, and you can you can feel it. So of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. depending on your taste, you can carry on aging this bottle another two, three years with no problem at all. We think after ten Definitely. years aging on the list, it's time to drink it. I think it's a, it's I would beautiful. Say it's a, yeah, it's a, it's great. A, but it's best now. Yeah, it's now as its best. It's, uh, yeah, it's showing beautifully the freshness, uh, the creaminess, all, but very integrated. And I feel a great balance in it. But I would say another two, three years will, will get better. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, the oak is the, it's not what is dominant, the taste. It's here. No, it's right. It doesn't take over. You. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it's here to bring, to enhance the flavors of the, the grape varieties, which are now very well developed. But it's, uh, it's you know, the oak is a tool, uh, is a tool that helps exactly. to enhance the flavors and to make these flavors better integrated themselves. 
So it's very important also the, the use and the finesse of the use of oak here, which is absolutely fantastic. So it's, uh, it's not overpowering. It doesn't take over, but it's uh, there. You can taste it, you can smell it, and you can feel it. But it's, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't take over. It doesn't be, it, it's not going to be overpowering. So it's a, it's, a, it's a great wine with a great balance. I mean, yeah. Ah, wonderful. Um, let yes. me ask you it's something. It's really a dinner, yeah. a dinner champagne as well. It's right. So this champagne. is one of what I was, yeah, I was, I was going to ask to you. So what kind of food would you pair with it? So it's exactly. something that we, we, needs a rich food. So, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. A rich food. And uh, portray, uh, uh, ideally, a duck would be fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would say I would say something meat or yeah duck or something like that. So it's a, it's a wine which which can be very well paired with meat uh, because you know something we are we have always uh, you know something um, sometimes uh, the people are a little bit confused when they uh, match champagne with meat and they sometimes they ask me is that possible to match to pair champagne with meat yes because i think these can be very well paired with meat mm -hmm. exactly you can actually a whole meal pairing with champagne yeah. uh, and you Right, exactly. And, uh, well, yes, it's uh, absolutely great. But I'm curious now to taste uh, the Dosage Zero because, uh, and this is something that I would like to ask. So, um, technically, what does it mean, Dosage Zero, for first? And how the dosage can um, improve the uh, flavors of uh, the, the, the wine? And what, the, what do we expect in a dosage zero uh, in terms of tasting? Well, you know that naturally in Champagne, uh, the on the ground is very cool. It's made of mm -hmm. chalk, mm -hmm. white stone. And uh, this means that Champagne, so uh, also the acidity okay is naturally quite important in our okay. juice and of course in our yeah uh, mm -hmm. so ideally to balance the mm -hmm. minerality and mm -hmm. this natural acidity we have used to add a little girl just after this gorgement mm -hmm. say it naturally yeah. this acidity that's what we call the sure. girl that's what uh, we call the dosage it's made of mm -hmm. sugar and white wine we yeah. make our own liqueur and we add this to our champagne. Uh, a yeah. normal dosage for a, a brut would be in between 10, 12 grams. If you, you have a low dosage for a brut champagne, it could be 8 grams. That is our mm -hmm. case for brut tradition, yeah. 8 grams. Yeah. In the case of yeah. mm -hmm. brut reserve, we have just tasted it. It was only grams per liter. And okay. now so, dosage zero, yeah. it means that okay. we added sugar at all after disgorgement. Added after disgorgement. Okay, interesting. So, so uh, we, we do this when the wine itself uh, will deserve to express by mm -hmm. itself with no liquor added at all. Interesting. So, so yeah. The, 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 this is very important to understand. So the small amount of uh, sugar added will determine uh, how the wine will be labeled to the consumer. So brut, extra brut, demi sec, or dosage zero are always related to the to the residual sugar of the wine. So if it's dosage zero, means no sugar added at all. But it's also in this case, I think that the uh, you know the adding sugar is another tool to compensate the balance of the wine, which is very important to understand because sometimes people uh, think that brut, uh, okay, I don't like brut because it's sweet. No, it's different. So it means that you add a little bit of sugar to compensate to, uh, you know, to, and it's very important to achieve the balance of this wine. So once you taste brut, and also when I tasted, when I tasted the brut reserve, 
I didn't feel the six grams of sugar. I didn't feel uh, such a sweet or something like that. But it was something integrated. And this means that the wine works perfect in your mouth. So, That's and right. this is very important also once you do the dosage zero. Once you uh, don't, if you don't add sugar, this doesn't mean that the wine is good. So it, it means that uh, the, you decide to don't add sugar because this one, the wine is good as is it. And this is important to understand. So also the sugar as the use of oak is a tool in the winemaking process. And so I'm very curious to uh, taste this. So how is that made? In, um, I'm, I'm talking about the cuvee, uh, how the cuvee of this wine is made. So in this case, uh, we are only using reserve wine. Okay, uh, because, interesting. Uh, you, you will have two different approaches for uh, dosage zero. You could mm -hmm. have aged three years that you would have yeah. with the normal dosage and with zero mm -hmm. dosage. Uh, in our case, we think uh, zero dosage for a young child is not suitable. We think right. that you need to age your wine a little bit. So in this case, it's a blend of three different reserve wine. Going back ah, to uh, seven, eight, nine years. In wow. The yeah. reserve wine, and we have a special blend done on reserve wine. Three different years. And we have in total a majority of Pinot Noir by two thirds and one third of Chardonnay. Interesting. So it's Interesting. a wine that has been aged seven years, some reserve wine going back to 10 years. Okay, interesting. And what about the, the grape varieties in this wine, the dosage zero? So two thirds of Pinot Noir and one okay. third of... All right, all right, all right. Um, this is interesting. So, and, the, and the, uh, let me know if I understood correctly. So the... Uh, in this wine, we have a, a, a blend of different years, and in this case, the maturity of this wine uh, makes it good to don't add any sugar because this maturity exactly. is very important for yeah for the balance of the wine, and this makes the wine good as is it. Exactly, and okay. uh, there is one more thing uh, to add: it's the the fact that the raised wine part of it has mm -hmm. also been aged in oak barrels. Interesting, okay. So we, that's okay. what is in common. That's why we have these two champagnes together. Oh, Both interesting. of them have some reserve wine aged in oak barrels. So we, all have, we always have a little oaky taste for uh, our low dosage or zero dosage. Okay, in both of them, we should expect a little bit more com complexity in both are released by also these reserve wines uh, being aged in oak barrels. So let's uh, smell first. Well, you know what? In the smell here, I uh, immediately got a little bit more minerality in the smell and a bit more of citrusy note, citrus notes, and uh, um, kind of orange peel or something like that. This, I believe, is the Pinot Noir that brings these uh, flavors, uh, more minerality. And um, yeah, I can get now a little bit more spice. But at first smell, what I've got uh, is the citrus, orange, uh, floral. And now, just now, I've got the, the spice. So the, the, the hint of spice, but it's not... Uh, uh, but is is a hint, a very is a touch, so that you just feel once you move the nose. But no, no, it's not a deep smell. It's something very, uh, it's a touch, very elegant. Here I can get more uh, minerality, but the nose exactly. also here is profound. The same, exactly. um, the same, yeah, is deep, same as the other, but with different flavors, and that's interesting. So let's give a sip. Hmm. Wow. Totally different. You know what? Um, at first, uh, what I felt, so the, the previous one is wide in the, in the palette. It's very wide in the mid. Here, it's very tight. It comes uh, tight and it goes long, very, very long. That's, I believe, is the Pinot Noir that gives this lingering uh, in the finish. 
And uh, what I felt, uh, it is full body, the palate is complex. So there is a tension, strength, uh, which is more familiar of the Pinot Noir. And also here, afterwards, um, in the finish, once, I, once you swallow the wine, you get the minerality. But it's a little bit more intense than the previous one. The acidity is very bright and very long finish, yeah. Exactly. You, one, one thing you say for the first thing. One thing you say, you say it's very creamy. It's very, it has yeah. Tense. It's very straight. Uh, it's very sharp. You, you don't have yeah right this is here is what the... yeah right yeah this is what i what i immediately felt uh, is not the 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 sensation the creamy sensation that here i feel very um more strength and a little bit more acidity uh and minerality as well and also quite long finish and afterwards at the end comes again the spice and the minerality again well you know it's a it's a, it's not an easy wine to pair uh, maybe more with seafood this one don't you think so so of course seafood uh, would be fantastic but uh, i prepared yeah. uh, a little for you uh, i would suggest for the aperitif to pair this champagne with a, an old parmesan. Oh, that's parmesan interesting. Cheese. Uh, never thought about that. Yeah, I think that all the parmesan cheese would pair perfectly with this because exactly. it has the acidity enough to match with the, the, the fatty uh, sensation of the, of the cheese. Uh, yeah, especially if it's all the parmesan cheese. Uh, yeah, I think that that would be perfect, this one. And you know what? Um, let's uh, uh, go back to the sensation of dosage in taste. Well, you know what? If I, if I tasted both blind, I would have never said which one is Brut and which one is dosage zero. But probably you, because you are, you know, you are into the industry, into the uh, work uh, for so many years, uh, you probably say the even much better than me if which one was uh, zero or brute reserve if you would have tasted blind but for me i think that the use of the dosage here it is very uh, integrated and it's uh, it, and it is very very difficult to to recognize which one would have be uh, dosage zero which one brute reserve don't you think so you're very right. I think from the nose and the on the palate, uh, you yeah. would probably would not guess there is yeah. dosage in the second one. Uh, yeah, That's yeah. only at the end of the mouth. Probably that at the end. You can the, tell uh, yeah. that this champagne is very clean and is naked yeah. with no sugar right. at all added. Yeah, right. Because this, uh, this sensation of clean, of minerality, of tension, it, it doesn't make you feel the dosage, uh, even in the brute reserve. I mean, yeah, this is what I what I was uh, telling you. Exactly, yeah. and uh, that's exactly what we want to do. We want to uh, have the complexity. Uh, we want to have a rich champagne, and we have. We want to create. We don't want you to guess yes. at the beginning of the tasting that it is naked with no dosage, with no sugar. It's only at the end that this little surprise comes to you and you say, hey, oh, there is something missing. Probably, yes, yes but it's because yeah. there is no sugar added. That is very, very interesting. Someone said that to match this wine also with nice caviar, someone said. Well, you know, caviar can be, can be tricky because sometimes uh, when you taste uh, uh, caviar, you want to taste it uh, uh, pure. And of course, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the traditional pairing is vodka and caviar because the vodka is uh, very, very uh, pure and uh, alcohol uh, comes high and makes your mouth totally clean. Sometimes uh, the caviar cannot be very good with champagne because uh, uh, especially if the champagne has flavors, uh, uh, cannot 
be uh, quite paired, quite well paired with the uh, sensation of the caviar because it's very, very uh, savory uh, and sometimes it doesn't work well with the flavors mm -hmm. of the champagne. I will go more with, uh, uh, with seafood or like, uh, um, you know what, with shrimps, uh, something like that, uh, uh, or, um, le, um, uh, or oh, also a fish, uh, something like that. So it can be very well paired. It's a, it's a wine that brings acidity. So you need something a little bit yes. fattier uh, yeah, to, to, in order to clean your mouth in it. So it's yeah. uh, uh, the first one, I would have said meat, of course, uh, the Brut Reserve. It's an uh, amazing wine to match with meat. It's, it, it's very, very interesting pairing because uh, it, it, it enhances the flavors of the food. This one, I would have said, uh, yeah, seafood, totally. And what about this oh, one? Scallop. scallop could be a good idea. Scal okay, good idea. White meat also. Mm. But let me ask you something. Um, it, it is a wine to keep for further aging, this one? Well, once again, it's been aged uh, now. Uh, it's been aging for seven years. But it doesn't seem... Up. I mean, one, one, when I taste this, I taste a lot of freshness. It, and it doesn't seem uh, age, aged so long. Uh, also, also, in this case, if I would have tasted blind, uh, I would have never said that it has been aged for so long time. Yes, it's... Uh, well, you know, it's because... Exactly. Well, it's the, the proportion of Chardonnay and, and naturally the acidity you have in Chardonnay, uh, the proportion is quite important. It's uh, one third. So, of course, it is helping this blend to age a little bit longer. To age. Exactly. Definitely. Exactly. Definitely. Yes. Yes. But again, another, another th two, three, four years in your own cellar uh, with no problem. With no problem. You can keep this bottle for another, uh, another couple of years. That's perfect. Okay, so thank you so much, Christophe. This was uh, an amazing tasting. So, I have learned so much new things, especially when I taste with you. Uh, it makes me um, better understand a lot of things about champagne, especially the, the dosage in this case, which is very interesting to uh, taste them and to better, uh, you know, to better compare them. Um, it's uh, very helpful to understand the use of the dosage because sometimes uh, uh, people are um, confused uh, about looking at the label and say, okay, extra brut, uh, brut. Uh, uh, this doesn't mean that it's dry or drier. This is always related to the residual sugar of the wine, and this is just a tool to help uh, the balance of the wine. So, but it's not a sensation exactly. that we should expect uh, in taste. So, and this is very important to understand. And also in the dosage, also in the dosage zero. This is, of course, uh, um, something. Uh, a goal which is uh, very hard to achieve. So the balance uh, when you don't add anything. This is very, very difficult, I mean, to achieve. And you have done this so perfectly. <laughs> Thank you very much, Carota. Thank you so much. And you. Uh, see you next time. Thank exactly. you for everyone I, who followed us. <laughs> I, I think we are both going to do the same thing. We are both going to finish these two bottles. <laughs> Yeah, sure yeah, yeah, yeah. Friends and family. Definitely. I have now I have my afternoon very, very busy. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Carlotta. Thank you so much. See bye you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.